Welcome to Harsha Trainings, everybody. Okay, to start off with, as I told you, please let this be an interactive session. Okay, it's not just me speaking, but I want you also to respond, right? Both online and those who are sitting here. Okay, so what do you know? What do you know about English grammar? Yes, you know, grammar is there in every language, right? So, what is grammar? One second. All of you, please mute. Thank you. Yes. What is grammar? Okay. Okay. The basic. Okay. Right. So they are the basic rules that form not only English, any language for that matter. Right. There is grammar for each and every language. OK, so let's just check you know, whether if, if we are right or wrong. As per our English grammar logic definition. OK. Now, so English grammar, as I told you, it's a set of rules. OK, that uh, which ensures that the grammar or the language that we are using, the sentences that we are framing or what we are speaking to, it is correct and is in a is in universal format, what we can say. Right? It's a standard use everywhere, right? Not only for English, but any other language. Okay, so it what does it help us to? It helps us to preserve the accuracy. It should not be like we follow one grammar rule and the other person follows another. Then that will not be rule. Right, rule is for everybody, it's common. So there are specific rules in a language which everybody follows, standard rules, to make it easier for everybody to understand and to communicate. Yes, so it helps us to preserve the accuracy of the language by guiding its learners as well as the users towards standard language use. So everything should be standardized. Okay. Now. You, we all might think, no, why do we need to learn grammar? What is the use? We know how to talk without learning grammar. So what is the use of learning grammar? Yes. So we have discussed just right now, just now, that they are nothing but rules, set of rules. For every language, even for when you learn a software program or software technology, there are some protocols, right? Any project you follow, anything you do, there is a certain set of rules that we need to follow. Yes. So why do we need to learn English grammar? So that is because the native and the second language speakers of English. What do you mean by native speakers whose mother tongue is English? There are some people, there are people in the world whose mother tongue is English itself. So they become the native speakers of the language, right? And there are people for whom English is the second language, right? For us, is it the second language? What about us? What is our first language? Our mother tongue. So we are not native speakers of English. We are non-native speakers. So right, right? So English becomes our second language if we learn. Because in India we have a number of languages. So it is hard to describe which is our second, which is third language. Some schools follow English as first English, or second or third. Depends, right? So the number of native and second language speakers of English, they make it, they make the language most widely used, right? Nowadays, everybody uses English. May it be officially or even unofficially, even in schools, right? Most of us uh, prefer to speak in English because that is a globalized language. That is a language that everybody understands, right? And due to this globalization, the market has increased for English learning okay so it is widely used language in the world till date at least and it has peaked what do you mean by peaked it has increased to its peak we know what is peak right the importance of learning it so learning this grammar learning learning this grammar is the first step learn english okay any language for that matter to learn any language, we need to learn the grammar first of that language. 
okay so it's like we don't have any choice but to learn grammar to learn the language right at least to speak it in a correct way okay now you know the history of english grammar yes no you don't know okay so it's a language that can explain okay if what do you mean target language if you want to learn that language that is your target right so it the grammar can explain what initially fails to make sense while coming across uncommon sentences or new words what do you mean by this line anyone what do you mean by this line the sentence you can read it once again if english is your target language that i have told you what it is right it can explain what initially fails to make sense while coming across uncommon sentences and or new words if somebody is telling you something okay if we know grammar then we will be able to understand if it is correct or not if it is logical if it makes sense no language perspective if we don't lo- don't know what grammar is what basic basics of the language is then obviously we will not be able to identify and we will what we understand is what will we understand that whatever the other sp- person is speaking is correct because we don't know ourselves right so it helps us to explain what is wrong and what is right in the language okay and uncommon sentences if you come across something which is not commonly said or commonly spoken about you will be able to identify it okay or new words or any sentences okay and one may be interested to know about the history obviously have you ever thought how did the language come into being who framed it who invented any language for that matter not only english have a, did you ever have a thought about it no no so language we have learned it so we'll speak yes okay don't be serious keep smiling you will learn a lot if you keep smiling okay right so let's start a brief history i will not take any history class here right in brief okay so we know that sanskrit is our basic uh, language in india at least right so sanskrit grammar when did it originate very long ago in bc around 5th century bc very thousands of years ago right but uh, the english grammar that we are learning the modern english grammar it the roots are from greek language greek grammar and this greek grammar was developed around you know 1st century bc okay you understand right bc and ad you understand yes so 1st century bc and after greek it was latin the you know oldest languages that we can say right and this latin is also based on greek and it was just uh, like 2000 years later okay so in brief you need not remember all this just its general knowledge right how the language originated okay now yes who makes these rules have you ever thought who makes grammar rules you know previously we used to uh, pronounce a word in a different way but now the pronunciation has changed completely who has made that change who changed it who approves it any idea no so who makes grammar rules there are people called grammarians or linguists right they make the rules so that you know the language learning becomes easier for everybody okay have you ever uh, read shakespeare's uh, poetry and all shakespeare's stories what was the language in those what's the language used in those stories and what about the language that is used nowadays in textbooks or any novels it is easier comparatively right do you remember any words or any one line at least of uh, shakespeare no it's hard to remember because the words are such yes so it it makes learning the language easy okay so grammarians are nobody but they are scholars who study teach write 
and research on the syntax what is what do you mean by syntax it's a rule right a particular rule they research on the syntax and the grammatical rules because why because they love the language who who does research on any subject if you are interested to know more about it right and do something new then you do a research on that particular subject right so because of their love and passion for the language now they are generally you know the native speakers whose mother tongue is english itself they deal with all these things generally mostly 99.9% of the times okay now those were grammarians now who are linguists linguists are language nerds what do you mean by nerd who is a nerd you might find this icon in your phones nerd icon nerd. have you ever used it the nerd icon it has glasses have you ever seen it the nerd icon in your phone the emojis that you have no okay a nerd is no one but um to be very specific in common language a bookworm this all who is very studious okay okay who is always into books always studying 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 you know no social life nothing okay so these people are such people okay who are always they are language nerds always into language do something about the language you know change this change that okay such people what did what do they like to do they love to dissect what do you mean by dissecting cutting it open it research it okay do all sorts of things with the language experiment okay and they finding similarities and dissimilarities between different languages languages in the world just to know how this language is or how the other languages are when compared to the english language okay now these language and grammar nerds they list out the what the rules are now the existing rules okay within the language and those become those those become the grammatical rules so they keep changing not completely but a little bit they keep making the changes okay so those are the people who make the rules in english grammar okay um yes i think i have told you languages have a tendency to evolve they keep changing right as i've told you the language before that we have used in english and the language that we use now is completely different the shakespeare era and this era the present generation right so, so it keeps on changing and evolving with time depending on who uses them and where do they use them the language that is used in us is different the slang and the accent and the word spellings everything the pronunciation it is different from the language that is used in european countries and it is different from the one that is used in asian countries in india or europe or you know more eastern countries like japan or philippines the accent keeps on changing yes so it has uh, been rather rigid in the sense that grammar grammarians and linguists have laid down rules so so why do the why these rules have been laid down is the reason being so that the language does not change completely even though the pronunciation and you know the other things change but the grammar as such should not change the basic rules that are there they should not change so that it is understandable by everybody right so with time english has become the language of the entire world i guess everybody agrees with this previous generations our ancestors they didn't know what english is or how to speak english right but now most of us know even in every part of the world all of us know how to speak english at least people can understand the basic meaning right of what if somebody speaks in english they can at least understand okay so the um, it has become the language of the entire world and the rules started evolving with the cultures and li linguistic differences of its new speakers this we have already discussed right so depending on the new speakers the languages and the geographical locations the rules keep on they will keep on evolving based on cultures okay so that was a very brief uh, history about english grammar i guess i didn't bore you right okay now
we know that english is very important as i've already told you right now what is the importance of learning english all of us learn english right there are so many institutions that teach english spoken english these skills you know that skills all sorts of skills right and most of us go for spoken english why what is the importance easy communication and okay so what happens what is the advantage if you learn english grammar the students of the language they get to know what the language has what are the different features generally if we don't learn the grammar and the language in depth okay we can manage to communicate with each other in english right but what happens if we know correct grammar what happens obviously we will be set apart from the rest of the crowd right so english for us is not native we are non native speakers so english becomes our second language right so as second language learners english you know becomes a second language right so we often learn the rules english grammar rules in english by comparing them with the grammar of our native language right if people are from ap or telangana they try to compare it with telugu from karnataka they compare with kannada you no know? similarly kerala malayalam tamil nadu tamil or north indian hindi punjabi their own native language right so they keep comparing it and have you ever heard of this word mti what is mti mother tongue language influence most of us have it the way we speak our mother tongue we try to implement the same thing when we speak english that but both are different right so the we always try to compare the grammar okay which actually should not be done english is a total different language we cannot compare or we cannot match it with any other language grammar okay now diving deeper we have five basic components in english grammar okay one the phonology i will tell you what all these mean right one is phonology okay morphology the syntax semantics and pragmatics phonology uh online resources i guess i am audible to everyone and clear you yes yes okay. yes ma'am okay thank you i guess i can i can move forward one is phonology morphology syntax semantics and pragmatics so what is phonology any idea even online people uh, you can just unmute yourself and answer what is phonology any idea pronunciation like that. pronunciation the phonetics right yes you are correct so what is phonology it is a study of pronunciation i think uh, all of you have heard what phonetics the word phonetics yes what is phonetics pronunciation how we pronounce uh, different words okay in a language so let's understand what each and every term means okay now phonology as i told you it is about learning the correct spellings and pronunciations okay so what does it do defining theorizing and teaching the correct spellings and pronunciations of each word are the what do you say are the basic or the biggest responsibility of grammar right these are very important right unless you learn the correct spellings and pronunciation you will not be able to communicate right pronunciation means you will learn verbal skills speaking skills correct spellings where you will know how to write correctly those are non verbal skills writing skills right so phonology and phonetics 
they both deal with spellings of what spellings should be like okay or like. now for instance for example uh, the grammar if you take the word saline s a l i n e right it will always end with an e that's the rule okay now the pronunciation will be the first type is what saline that i have told you that is in the european countries that is british english we have two types of english right british and american the accents are different for both okay so it ends with an e and the pronunciation will be saline that's how we pronounce in uk but when we come to us the american style how does it how is it pronounced somebody is on muted please mute yourself thank you okay so in us how do we pronounce it it is there on the screen it is saline or you can say um no 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 it is not saline in the uk it is pronounced as saline but in us it is pronounced as saline saline okay the meaning the word is the same the spelling is also the same the only the pronunciation is different okay so if we talk about that there are, basically there are four kinds of accents in the world one is american british uh, australian and canadian but uh, we majorly speak about british and american accent okay so it is very important to learn the correct pronunciations both are correct but uh coming going to again history going back because we have been ruled by britishers we generally follow british english because we have learned english from them so we follow british most most of the times okay now the next one morphology what is morphology it is nothing but the formation meaning and the usage of words that is called morphology so it takes care of word formations meaning making that is what the word means as well as the usage where can we use it and how can we use it okay in sentences that where we can express how we actually feel how people actually feel right for example you know a grammar explains the rules you know what are prefixes and suffixes yes what are what's the prefix and what's the suffix sorry hmm. Hmm. yes no see if so we have a word. sorry yes somebody was saying something online before the words and after the words prefix means before the words okay yes so prefix is it's a part of a word that we can join at the beginning of a word to change it okay and suffix is it's a word word in the sense it might be a two three letter you know a word which we join to the end of a word to make a new word those are called prefix and suffixes right so it has some rules to add prefixes and suffixes to the already existing words okay or if we add something as i told you the meaning might change it becomes a new word completely okay when we add such kind of uh, the words the new words okay so that is about morphology now coming to the third and fourth that is syntax and semantics now these are uh, this is the part of a part of the grammar that deals with the formation of sentences important yes to speak or to communicate sentence formation is very important yes so these deal with the sentence formation and also what they mean when particular you know words are used in succession what is succession one after the other okay when a group of words are used one after the other it is important to know what they mean we can't just use you know have a sad way right any word that we get we can't it should make some meaning some sense to it yes for example uh, do you know this 
in english grammar how is a sentence framed we have subject verb object that is a basic rule to construct a sentence in english yes all of you know you don't know yes so that is a basic you can say a formula for sentence formation subject plus verb plus object okay now what do the grammatical rules explain as i think we have discussed already this they explain how letters can form a word a group of letters form words right and group of words form <laughs> phrases or sentences okay in in the order that they become that it becomes a meaningful sentence right it there should be some logical meaning behind it okay it teaches the ropes what do you mean by ropes you know what a rope is is a thread right so teaches the ropes to its learner or it you can say it becomes as a it helps as a support for english learners by explaining and exemplifying exemplifying is describing in detail right each topic which is relevant to for us to use the language correctly yes i guess i'm clear if you have any doubts please stop me can you just raise your hand stop me you are able to follow what i'm saying yes sure okay online i guess you are able to follow me yes ma'am okay thank you okay now so we have uh, understood that a group of letters form a word and a group of word forms a group of words form phrases or sentences right now what is a word yes it is a group of letters but what is it it is a basic basic unit right even to for speaking or writing whatever it is okay so word is the basic unit of a language any language they can be classified according to their action and meaning but it is really difficult to define what a word exactly means because one word can be used in two to three different contexts based on our usage okay so a word refers to a speech sound it's a sound right if we uh, technically say it is a sound nothing but a sound or it might be a mixture of two or more speech sounds what do you mean the speech sound what is a speech sound online anyone what is a speech sound anyone uh, anyone heard of syllables syllables syllable s y l l a b e l okay see if we go to this slide where we discussed about saline see one word we can break it into different parts based on the sound change yes sir again line so there the speech is the sound is changing right so sa becomes one syllable speech sound sa lai lai becomes another speech sound you will find these in dictionaries if you have ever opened a dictionary okay i don't know how many of you have but you will find these in dictionaries they put a slash in words to learn how to pronounce that word right those are called syllables or speech sounds okay so it is nothing but um yes two or is a word is a combination of two or more speech sounds or syllables okay which can be both written and in the verbal form verbal is saying speaking written is non verbal okay now a word works as a symbol to represent or refer to something in a language for to communicate yes everybody agrees with me what is a word it is nothing but it is used to express or communicate right whatever we want to say okay for example you take anything we know what uh, what words are right now there is no need to go in detail okay so to come to a you know perfect definition a word is a smallest unit of grammar that can stand alone as a 
complete utterance separated by spaces in written language and potentially by pauses in speech so when we are speaking we give a small pause between e between two words right and when we are writing we give a space yes so morphology is nothing but it is a branch of linguistics or the study of formation of words that is called as morphology okay so the branch of lingu linguistics that studies the meaning of these words they are called as lexical semantics lexical is not, nothing but the words vocabulary okay lexical means vocabulary okay now now we know what a word is now what is a sentence group of words a word is a group of letters or you know group of alphabets and a sentence is a group of words word is the basic unit sentence becomes the largest unit of grammar any language okay so it becomes with, it starts with a, i think we these are all basics we all know this we have studied in this in school right it begins with a capital letter in the beginning right and ends with a full stop in the end we put a full stop right or an exclamation mark or a question mark depends on the type of sentence we are using right now uh this vocabulary words okay so for example uh he is a good boy it's a statement simple sentence is he a good boy becomes a question right it's also called as interrogative sentence interrogative sentence okay or if we say what a nice weather that becomes an exclamatory sentence exclamatory you know what is an exclamation mark is right what an what a nice weather becomes an exclamatory sentence okay so a sentence as i've told you it requires a minimum of a subject verb and object but at least a subject and a verb even if we don't have the object sometimes it's fine but subject and a verb are mandatory okay so as i told you sometimes the subject of a sentence can be hidden but the verb must be visible and present we can say play okay we can, we can give a command or an order or we can just say ask somebody to just play there is no subject there there is no object there just a verb play but still it is making some sense right if i say play what do i mean go and play or i take somebody's name and say play right so the subject is hidden but still there is some logic there is some sense it makes sense right so for example if i say see do it so in this sentence a subject you is hidden if i say do it that means you do it that's what i mean so you need not be said explicitly right and the but the verb do is visible so it's a uh, i think uh, we have already gone through the sentence definition right understood guys what is the sentence what is the word any doubts you have online we are good online we are good we are able to follow okay thank you right so we know what is a word and what is a sentence right so let's see what are the different types of sentences that we have okay structurally structurally means based on the structure of a sentence we have four types of sentences one is a simple sentence compound sentence complex sentence and compound complex sentence four types of sentences for online people if i get disconnected please wait i will join back and if you get disconnected due to some issue please join back. Sure. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. Okay, you're writing down. So there are four types of sentences: simple sentence, compound sentence, complex sentence, and compound complex sentence. Shall I go to next slide? Finished writing? Yes. Okay. now first the simple sentence what is a simple sentence it has it must have a 
single clause nothing but a single verb which is independent of the other part of the sentence okay it cannot take another clause one verb is enough it should be independent verb for example i have can say i always wanted to become a writer only one clause it is only one verb what is that what is that verb here you know what are verbs right action words any word that has an action in it is called a is called a verb okay so only one verb is there one clause one verb i always wanted to become a writer any doubt you have guys no are able to understand yes okay so understood what a simple sentence is yes sorry one clause nothing but a single verb a verb okay a writer no to become these are clauses right shall i move on yes so come going to compound sentence what is a compound sentence by the word itself we can say if you have science students here what is a compound right. Com combination right so a, comp a compound sentence it must have more than one independent clause right with no dependent clauses for example you know we have something called as conjugations and punctuations they are both used to join together these clauses any punctuation like full stop commas okay they are used to form these sentences for example i always wanted to become a writer and she wanted to become a doctor how did we combine it using a comma and a word and comma and these two are used to combine the sentences and form a compound sentence easy enough i guess easy what's a compound sentence just joining two sentences with the help of a punctuation or a conjug what are conjugations are nothing but words that help us to join two sentences and or but okay these these such words are called as Com conjugation words yes no both are also correct no problem yes understand yes yes now coming to complex sentence what is a complex sentence see simple sentence it has only one clause compound sentence it has two independent clauses yes uh, but complex sentence also has more than one clause but one must be dependent on the other see if we go to the previous example yes first example is i wanted to become a writer that is simple okay nothing is dependent on anything now coming to compound i said i wanted to become a uh, he wanted to become a writer and she wanted to become a doctor both are independent right they are not dependent on each other we have two but both are independent of each other but coming to complex sentence there there might be or there must be more than one clause but one of them must be an independent and the other should be dependent that is a complex sentence yes one should be independent the other clause should be dependent okay for example i know that you always wanted to be a writer so here the dependent clause is followed by a connector that that is also a connector okay so i know is one you always wanted to be a writer is the other right so it is followed by a connector and an independent clause both you can say the other way round also yes understood everyone shall we move on now coming to compound complex sentence what is a compound see we know what is a complex sentence we know what is a compound sentence now what is a compound complex sentence yes it is a mixture of both it's a combination of both compound and complex sentences right in one sentence 
okay so it must contain at least two independent clauses and one dependent clause combination right the two independent clauses and one dependent clause see the example see the example here i know that you always wanted to become a writer but i always wanted to become a doctor combination it's it's one complete sentence there are two independent clauses here and one dependent clause we have combined three different sent two different sentences using connectors and but no punctuation marks like comma yes so structurally based on the structure we have four types of sentences right now based on the function we have four types of sentence again how the sentence what is the usage right one is declarative imperative interrogative and exclamatory four types of sentences based on the functionality declarative imperative interrogative exclamatory what is a declarative sentence it's a plain simple assertive sentence a positive sentence in you know in a simple language in common language yes 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 declaring something you're just saying something okay it simply expresses an opinion or a feeling that's it just a simple statement that we can say for example you can say i want to be a good cricketer right i want to go to school even that is a you can just just making a simple statement that is called a declarative statement or a declarative sentence okay now imperative is nothing but it is used to make a request or give a command those are called as imperative sentences they usually end with either a full stop but sometimes they can end with an exclamation mark when you generally give a request you know ask for a request or give an order that ends with a exclamation mark right when you say please sit down that's a request you can also say i need you to sit down as an order i need you to sit down that ends with an exclamation mark yes okay understood till here any doubts no is it confusing yes is it confusing no okay right now coming to interrogative sentences interrogative sentences are questions that's it to be very simple they are nothing but questions so they must end with a obviously question mark this we have learned right questions always end with a question mark so what are the different examples what is your name that is also an interrogative sentence which school are you from right where where do you live or you know when are you going to submit your assignment okay will you will you come to my party are you going to attend an interview all these are interrogative sentences okay now come into exclamatory sentence what are exclamatory sentences which uses an exclamation right they are we show our emotions using exclamatory sentences the term is exclamatory but we are aware what it is actually showing our emotions okay if we if the weather is very hot we say oh my god it's so hot today if it is nice you say the weather is so nice so all these are exclamatory sentences they are our emotions or feelings that we express for imperative also we are using exclamatory for what imperative imperative no imperatives are exclamatory. okay imperatives yes those we can the orders for orders you can use exclamatory exclamation mark yes here yeah here only exclamatory but but for the interrogative sorry not interrogative the imperative sentences you can use either a full stop or an exclamatory depends based on the context okay clear right now we have learned what a word is what a sentence is what are different types of sentences right based on structure or based on the function now coming a little bit deeper into the language you know what are parts of speech nouns verbs adjectives pronouns you know what are nouns you know all these but these are called parts of speech different parts of speech okay they are nothing but the words are classified or categorized based on their roles 
and functions in the language right where they can be used then uh, grouped you can say okay so these encompass everything whatever is there in the language it has everything okay so um okay have you ever played name place animal thing when you were kids yes online have you played name place yes. animal thing yes 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 yes, Any time. yes. 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 So those are nothing but nouns, right? We might have played with unknowingly. Okay, when we were kids, we used to select a letter and write all the four with the same letter. Whoever gets the highest wins. Yes, so those are nothing but nouns. See, we have nouns, pronouns, verbs, adjectives, adverbs, preposition, conjunction, and interjection eight parts of speech okay finished noun pronoun verb adjective adverb preposition conjunction and interjection finished okay so what is a noun name plus animal thing to be very simple no to put it very simply so it refers to people places things ideas concepts everything etc these kind of suppose for example we say michael is a good boy so what is the noun michael it's a name right melbourne is a best city so melbourne becomes the noun city is also a noun it is also a place so we have proper nouns and common nouns okay so city becomes a common noun right but when you're specifically giving a name melbourne or hyderabad is a city so hyderabad is a proper noun right and proper nouns have to be written in capital the first letter should be in capital common nouns need not be written in capital because they are common now we write only proper nouns starting with a capital letter okay for example names of people right or some historic buildings which are which have a specific name okay those are nouns what are pronouns pronouns are which are used in place of a noun are called pronouns right so instead of the repeated use okay for example i'll say uh, i'll take a name okay ram is a good boy ram studies in so and so school okay ram goes to ram lives in hyderabad so instead of repeating ram ram again and again in each and every sentence we use pronouns ram is a good boy he lives in hyderabad okay he goes to so and so school so instead of saying ram we are using he right using he in place of a name pronoun is used in place of a noun a word that is used in place of a noun becomes a pronoun he she it i you we they them him her his all these are nothing but pronouns okay any word which is used in place of a noun becomes a pronoun understood yes yes see example is given here michael is a good boy he gets up early in the morning so instead of repeating michael we we have used he okay now the verb what is the verb now what is the verb i told you it gives the action so a verb is nothing but an action word a word that has action it play write read go all these are verbs okay so verb shows shows an action or on an ongoing condition okay it is considered as the heart of a sentence without a verb there is no sentence we have discussed this right the subject can be hidden a sentence can be written without an object but without a verb no it can't be right example alex is going home going there is an action right so going becomes the verb he loves his home love is an action right not physical action but still there is some action there is an emotion involved so it becomes a verb can you give me some examples of verbs other than what i have told you 
right yes and sorry march march okay watch okay so we have plenty of them infinite right sorry no you said something swim, swim. yes swim is also a verb okay so you understood what a verb is right now going to adjectives adjectives are nothing but it describes a noun in a sentence okay we know what are nouns so any word that describes a noun becomes an adjective okay okay if i say ram michael is a good boy right so michael is a noun what is the word that is describing michael good so good becomes an adjective right okay um okay this building is very tall what is the adjective there tall because tall is describing how the building is that becomes an adjective understood so adjective modifies or describes a noun in a sentence for example alex loves his beautiful daughters right daughters are nouns right so beautiful daughters beautiful becomes the adjective his daughters also love their caring father father is a noun what is describing the father the word caring the father is very caring so caring becomes the adjective simple any doubts no okay online any doubts no we are good no thank you. thank you okay now coming to adverbs what are adverbs simple adjectives describes a noun adverbs describe verbs no adverbs modify or describe adjectives verbs or other adverbs yes now it answers the question where when how and how much example if you don't understand the definition let's understand using an example he is running fast how is he running fast so fast becomes the adverb remember these when where how and how much if any word is answering these question any one of this these questions then that becomes the adverb he is running fast how is he running it is answering the how question right fast so fast becomes the adverb she always reads attentively how is she reading attentively and when always so always and attentively both are adverbs yes yes clear right preposition preposition it gives the position of the nouns so preposition gives context to nouns in relation to the other nouns or pronouns preposition always tells us the position of the noun for example i am going to france france is in europe so where is france in europe so in becomes the position where are you going to where are you going to france so france is noun to becomes the preposition to in under below above all these are prepositions okay now coming to conjunctions conjunctions are with the word itself junction it connects right a conjunction always connects noun phrases clauses or sentences you remember we've combined two sentences using and so and is a not and is nothing but a conjunction so connector yes now and but all these are connectors coming to interjections are nothing but they are short pauses in speech your emotions if you uh, get hurt what do you say ouch yes that is the sound that you uh, bring out right so that is an interjection like wow oh oh my god all these are interjections okay for example okay interjections are brief and abrupt pauses in speech usually used for expressing your emotions 
okay for example o that feels terrible there o becomes the interjection right alas they have lost the match that means where alas is the interjection there it's not in but a word a very short word used to express our emotions our feeling okay now different types of nouns that we have i think we've discussed all this right the name place animal thing yes any doubts you have shall i i don't think i need to go in detail with all these shall i online no ma'am you are good you are good right okay so shall i move on they are just examples given Yes, okay. please. Now, yes. Coming to different types of nouns: proper noun, common noun, abstract noun, concrete noun, countable, non-countable, collective, and compound. Eight types of nouns we have. Right. See, you might not be knowing the, you know, specific name for that noun, but you know what it is. Generally speaking, yes. what's a proper noun i have told you a proper noun is a name which refers to a single person or a single you know name a place or a thing for example your name it becomes a proper noun my name becomes a proper noun hyderabad becomes a proper noun but city is a common noun because we have many cities it's a place but still we have many uh cities right so those are common nouns for example melbourne it refers to only one particular city right steve one particular person or ram or you know any other person harita harsha anyone right now australia there is no other country like australia with that name so it becomes a proper noun okay and this that is fixed only for one country so it becomes a proper noun now coming to common noun it is a name for something which is common for many things as i told you city or you know a person right so it encompasses a particular type of things person or places for example country which is already given i have told you city right so it can refer to any country any city nothing in particular okay so a common noun is a word that indicates a person place or a thing okay understood understood the difference between common and proper noun yes okay feeling sleepy anyone yes. online yes somebody said yes no ma'am no no <laughs> sure you are not sleeping right some who said yes <laughs> okay <laughs> if you are sleepy we can have a fun game if you are ready for it sorry it's okay you can carry on <laughs> okay fine so uh, okay please mute right so uh, what is an abstract noun then what is an abstract noun it's a word i mean you cannot see it physically but it is there those are called abstract nouns for example you can say your feelings right you can say a uh, smile or uh, sad right time you cannot see time you cannot see work they are nouns but you can't see them physically they are called as abstract nouns examples are given truth lie happiness sorrow friendship humor all these you cannot see but still they are nouns right so they are called as abstract nouns any word that you cannot see physically but it is present is called an abstract noun okay coming to concrete noun it is just the opposite of abstract noun it is it refers to things that we can physically see okay for example this chair table all these things we can see physically right physical presence is, is there so these are called as concrete nouns okay now coming uh, countable and non countable nouns i guess you can we can understand by the name itself the things that you can count 
in number those are called as countable nouns this chairs tables people all these like right? they are called as countable non countable is which you cannot count salt sand sugar stars all these we cannot count still they are nouns right so they are called as non countable nouns understood so abstract nouns and proper nouns are always non countable nouns abstract and proper nouns but common nouns and concrete nouns can be both countable as well as non countable okay now coming to collective nouns for a group of things or a group of people or a group of animals collective a collection of nouns right for example if it is a family it's our family all our people there right in the family so family becomes a collective noun people a group of people it becomes a collective noun right a team we have many per, many people right many players in a team so team becomes a collective noun yes collective nouns can be both plural and singular you can't say families there are a group of people in a family but still it's a family it is not families right so but the difference americans prefer to use collective nouns as singular but both of the uses are correct in other parts of the world in american in america us people use collective nouns as singular they only say family cattle cattle itself means a group of animals okay now coming to compound noun so two or more then two two or three nouns if they appear together or with with other parts of speech then they create an idiom you know what are idioms what are idioms you have examples given below six pack two nouns coming together right but it is one single word so that's called an idiom right five year old i have a five year old daughter or i have a five year old son right so five year old they are nouns together they form an idiom yes son in law daughter in law mother in law father in law even that they are group grouped right snowball snow is a different noun ball is a different word when you combine these two nouns it becomes a single word snowball becomes single noun so that's an that is also a compound noun mailbox right even if you uh, you know uh, separate those two words they should have their separate meanings those type of words are called as nouns are called as compound nouns yes understood okay these are nouns we have actually it's a big topic we have singular this is very easy singular and plural nouns in the Our uh, term itself, in the name itself, we can understand what it is, right? They are single in number, okay? So they are naturally they are single. Duck, bush, man, house. All these are singular nouns, okay? See example. I have a pet duck, so it is a single duck becomes a singular noun, right? So I I don't think I need to go in detail in this, okay? Now coming to plural nouns. Plural noun plural is what? it forms of a singular noun are plural nouns the plural form of singular are nothing but plural nouns that is which has more than one thing in it for example duck becomes ducks so duck is singular ducks is plural right boxes bells mouse doesn't become mouses mouse becomes mice in plural form okay sheep remains sheep we don't say sheeps one sheep two sheep it's not two sheep okay sheep remains sheep sheep in both singular and plural right people both plural so these are the examples of plural nouns now regular and irregular nouns also we have okay so what are regular nouns they do not change in spelling even when they are changed to plural for example sheep is the spelling changing in singular and plural no so they are called as regular nouns okay in plural we add s or es to the plural form 
okay that is the basic word does not change we just add s or es at the end these type are called as regular nouns for example duck becomes ducks belt belts see we have added s or we have added es yes. right so these are regular nouns there is no much of a change in the word itself just addition whereas irregular nouns the word changes for example they do not have any suffixes we don't add s or es we just change the word man becomes men ox becomes oxen fox vixen goose geese mouse mice these are irregular nouns right to which we don't add s or es we just change the spelling of the word okay now possessive what are possessive nouns which are owned owned by something this laptop is mine it's my laptop so my becomes a possessive noun okay uh, that uh, the noun that owns something or has something in its possession is a possessive noun for example my cat's litter needs changing very soon cat's litter right so cat something is owned by that cat so cat becomes a possessive noun yes jackie's wallet is stolen your pet's feeder is missing so pet becomes a possessive noun there okay yes so we have verbal nouns all these okay after we finish nouns we'll take a break of 5 to 10 minutes okay you can take a break of 5 minutes and then we can connect back so what are okay we are, we are done with possessive nouns what are verbal nouns simple see these are very simple small topics yes so verb plus ing verb plus ing it acts as a noun or the subject of the sentence right for example run becomes running verb plus the ing form sorry the noun plus the ing form they become a they become a verbal noun for example smoking is injurious to health yes smoking smoke that is verb plus ing this is we are using this as the subject of a sentence so these are called as verbal nouns smoking killing running right based on the context that we use okay now material nouns nothing but the substances which are made out of tangible materials for example i like i like the common fascination with gold you can make something out of gold right so th those are called material nouns gold ornaments we can we make gold ornaments what is that made of it is made of gold so that becomes a material noun coal coal produces non renewable energy so coal becomes a material noun right humans we are 70% of water right we are made of water so water becomes a material noun again right see you need not remember the terminology as of such just try to understand the usage of the language the grammar that's enough okay these possessive nouns material nouns you need not remember the terms just understand the usage where can we use it and how can we use it that is enough right now what are the different functions as i told you it can be used as a subject direct object and then indirect object of a verb see with examples when we are using the noun as a subject subject is the first part of the sentence right the company is doing great we are use company is a noun right so we are using that as the subject of a sentence the first part the main part of a sentence so company becomes a so that is one usage using as a subject roses are the flowers of love so we are using roses as the subject so they are also flowers right so they are also nouns that is one usage next is as a direct object object are that thing object is a is the last part of the sentence okay so example i finally bought a 
new mobile mobile is a noun but we are using as a direct object right so it is also one of the usage next using as an indirect object max gave carol another chocolate so carol is a person right it is not the main subject but it is used as a indirect subject okay now object of preposition roses are the flowers of love the same sentence right now preposition here roses are roses is also a noun right but love is also noun abstract noun yes we have discussed about abstract nouns so love is an abstract noun okay so love here is used as the object of preposition of love of is a preposition right so of love now what is an adverb the train leaves today when does the train leave today so today it becomes the adverb adjective the office building faces the mall which building faces the mall the office building so office becomes the adjective form now possession the lion's cage is dangerous whose cage cage belongs to whom the lion so lion becomes the possessive possession noun possessive noun here okay or my brother's daughter is adorable what do you mean by adorable very loving cute yes so my brother's daughter whose daughter daughter belongs to brother so brother becomes the possessive noun understood the difference as i told you need not remember the terminology just remember the usage okay and the meaning where to use it how to use it enough okay fine so i guess all of you are very sleepy online still sleepy no we no. are sorry no no, no. sure Are you sure? Sure, sure, sir. Okay. Someone said they are sleepy. Who was that? It's maybe we need a five minutes of break. I think. Yes. 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 I told you I'll give you a five minute break. Yes. So let's no, take a short break. break here. It's twelve twenty five. Let's connect at twelve thirty again. I hope all of you will connect back, or you can just. uh be on mute and leave for 5 minutes you need not leave the meeting you are watching meeting sorry i'm not clear am i audible online yes yes ma'am you are audible okay okay so let's meet up after 5 minutes of break at 12:30 right yep don't miss we have a lot of fun activities coming up okay right yes we'll play online virtually okay yes you can just uh, can please leave I mean don't leave the meeting as such you can just go on a break for 5 minutes yep thank you be back even you can you guys can leave have a 5 minute short break and come back
Welcome back. Are we ready to start? Yes, online. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Okay. Yes, so dull. Not energetic. Okay. Shall we play a game? Ready for it? Yes, ma'am. We'll play virtually. Sorry. Yes, no response, why? Let's play, yes, we are ready. Yes, yes, good, good. One second. Okay, so it's a very easy game. Okay, it's, I'll just give, uh, be ready with a pen and a paper, all of you, online and offline. Please be ready with a pen and a paper. Are you ready? Is everybody ready? Yes. yes. Pen and paper. Right. Nice energy. Who is Venkat Ram? Who is Venkat Ram? Let not me sleep, madam. Is my voice so uh, sharp? Venkat Ram. Please be on mute. Huh? Please mute yourself. Yes. Yes. So are we ready for the game? Online? Yes. Ready yes, with ready with pen and paper? Yes. 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 It's a very easy game, but uh, I guess you need to just on your video for once uh one second. Not now, but after we finish the game. Okay. I'll give you directions. You just need to draw that picture on your paper. Ready? Ready? Here. Offline and online. Okay, we are starting. Put the pen on your paper first, obviously. Yes, done. Please respond. Yes, yes, done. Okay. I can hear only one person's voice. Why so? Yes, okay, yes, we're ready. <laughs> okay, okay. Never mind. Right. Turn right to your right. Turn the pen towards your right. Please mute. Draw a straight line. Again, go downwards. Just turn your pen downwards. Draw a slanting line, a diagonal line. Again, turn to your right. Turn the pen towards the right. Draw a straight line. Turn the pen towards the upwards. Draw a diagonal line. Now, from left to right, draw a semicircle. 
wherever you have stopped right now draw a semicircle from left to right now again draw a straight line downwards straight line downwards again a semicircle from down to up done all of you online yes yes here going to next page right? next page why right? you're drawing such a big uh, picture is it okay so i guess you need to just switch this on your videos for a second and show me what you have drawn just for a second if you are comfortable here offline can you show me what you have drawn you can you show me your books keep your books well, i can't see okay okay what about you i i was to draw two semicircles you don't only one semicircle what about the others you three you have not drawn why okay you have drawn no you have drawn no okay no problem what about online online please please on your videos for a second if you are comfortable and show me your drawing one second sorry you want to see you didn't draw no okay okay sujana i can see okay rupesh i can see okay what about others okay what about others uh okay 391 i can see hima bindu i can see megha lobita i can see okay swati i can see okay 533 i can see what about others online not interested okay anyways okay you can switch off your videos please thank you so much so it was just to see um uh, the one the game or the activity that we've done just now it's basically based on listening skills how well we can listen and how each and every one of us interprets the commands or the you know directions given to them each of each and everybody has their own way of understanding right when i say turn right you might turn right turn the pen you know right to the right but when i say draw straight line it might be right side it might be towards the down it depends the way you understand right so it is basically uh, an activity for listening skills that i've just done because you were all feeling sleepy right both online and one or two here offline also so you were feeling sleepy so i just thought i'll play this game sorry yes you said something no okay so shall we continue yes no yes 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 thank you okay thank you so much okay
so we're done with nouns right so we know what pronouns are yes so what are the what's the definition of pronoun now give me the definition in your own words i don't want this definition no there is a proper definition of a pronoun but i what did you understand we have already discussed right yes so in words that we use in place of a noun instead of you know keep keep on repeating the nouns we use pronouns those words are called as pronouns so as mentioned earlier in a sentence in place of a pronoun it is used in place of a specific noun that is mentioned earlier in a sentence so that you don't have to keep saying or writing that particular noun again and again right just to reduce the redundancy of the noun you know what what do you mean by redundancy repetition repeating the word that is called as redundancy okay example michael is a good boy this is the word, the sentence that we have been using right from the start okay so what do you say instead of saying michael gets up early in the morning we say he gets up early in the morning right we have reduced the repetition there now so here we do don't have to mention michael again okay the coach selected several key points he wanted the team to memorize them so here both he and them both are pronouns instead of repeating coach and key points again in the next sentence we have used he and them right so he replaces the coach and them replaces the key points okay sorry so we have another you no know, different examples for pronouns shall we go through them also not required you tell me yes sorry no need or shall not we required. not required okay shall we okay we'll move on to the next now the types of pronouns we'll not go into detail we'll just have a look of what exactly they mean right subject object possessive reflexive intensive relative demonstrative and interrogative i guess most of you can understand with the name itself what it means subject pronouns which is used in place of a subject that is at the starting of the sentence object is at the end the previous example that we have seen the coach so we have used he in place of coach right so he becomes the subject right and we have used them in place of key points so them becomes the object pronoun understood simple possessive it is my laptop it is mine right my mobile phone so my mine these are possessive pronouns belonging okay next reflexive what are reflexive pronouns opposite, opposite. example opposite. example reflexive pronouns are nothing but they redirect the sentence back to the subject reflex you know what is a reflection right reflection in the mirror it is it reflects back something whatever is shown so in a similar way a reflexive pronouns it redirects the sentence to the main subject okay for example since she is her own boss she gave herself a raise okay so herself myself himself they redirect back to the subject okay so these type of pronouns are called as reflexive pronouns herself himself themselves okay itself right myself all these are reflexive pronouns now coming to intensive pronouns intensive pronouns they add emphasis emphasis or importance but do not act as the object in the sentence they don't become the object of the sentence but they just add emphasis emphasis nothing but importance importance to the sentence for example i will do it myself okay here even though myself is at the end of the sentence it is not the object it doesn't become the object it is a intensive it is that specifying i will do it myself only okay you need not help me right that means i am emphasizing and giving importance to myself and saying that i will do it i don't need any help 
okay i myself saw the missing boat into the harbor the boat has gone missing and i myself has saw i've seen it so i am again emphasizing on my myself here right we intend to do all the work ourselves so anywhere when you want to emphasize on something we use intensive pronouns understood okay next relative pronouns they are nothing but they introduce a <coughs> sorry relative clause okay so they are used to make what is being talked about it is made clear okay for example the car that was stolen by the one they loved most that it's a pronoun right so what is it relating to the car here that means the car the car that was stolen right so that is what is it redirecting to the car understood everybody any doubts not understanding sorry not understanding once again okay see okay just take the example don't go to the definition you might get confused so example the car that was stolen so we are specifying a car right we have so many cars so which car are you talking about so that particular car we say okay the pen that was my favorite got lost so i have many pens but the one that was most favorite to me that got lost understood yes so it relates to some noun in the sentence so they are called as relative pronouns understood online online please just yes, okay thank you so which so object if the subject is c if you can see the table there the uh, usage is given which even the object at the object uh, form it remains which possession it changes to whose and uncertainly whichever we say whichever it is whatever it is right that means we are not certain about those things okay got it all of you okay now i'm moving on now we had demonstrative we we'll just go through the examples there's no need to for you to remember the definition as such right what is demonstrative pronouns that is a long way to go that means they indicate the either the closeness or the farness the distance from the speaker right it might be symbolically or literally no nope. anyways okay this these that those all these are called as demonstrative pronouns you might have heard of these words but you don't know that don't know what they are called right for example see this is my car so this becomes a demonstrative pronoun all these four are demonstrative pronouns remember this okay this these that those okay now going to interrogative pronouns interrogative we you know question forms right we have discussed this so what was the name of your dog question mark so interrogative interrogative pronouns produce questions they are what which who whom and whose if they refer to questions which are related to nouns okay a person or animal object they are called as interrogative pronouns examples have been given what was the name of your dog which is your favorite movie here what which all these are called as interrogative pronouns understood now coming to verb i told you what a verb is right simply put it's an action word which a word that has some action in it right for example jacob walks in the morning walk becomes a verb go like is how is is a verb there is no action in it right how can we say is as a verb we said verbs are action words which has action in it 
but does is have any action no so how can is be a verb here we're saying is is a verb they are called as helping verbs okay there is no as such an action involved in that word but still it is a verb because it is giving the state of a being it helps us to form a sentence okay it, it is used in place of some action word so it is they are called as helping verbs is are am okay all these are helping verbs next okay these are different forms of verbs actually six basic forms base base form is nothing but the verb itself is called a base form it's in the base form basic form play write go all these are base forms right now infinitive is nothing but when you add to to the verb to play to write to read okay to sing to dance all these are to study to sleep all these are when you add to to a verb it becomes the infinitive form okay now past tense we know play becomes played sing becomes sang you know present tense and past tense right next participle participle form we you know v1 v2 v3 the v3 form is the participle form go went gone so gone becomes a participle right so v3 is called the participle form okay now again present we use ing to the verb the ing form the continuous form right uh gerunds we have not come to gerunds yet that is also a kind of you know what do you say a basic grammar part okay not now we have that to the later part right so just to inform everyone here i don't because it's grammar is a very vast subject so we will not be able to cover each and everything in these two in these two and a half hours or two hours right so i am just going to tell you the basics that's it as you have been informed gerunds and all these come under come to the advanced level of english grammar right so unless you understand the basics we will you will not be able to understand what a gerund is that's the reason i'm not explaining that okay so we will cover only the basics of grammar now i will not be able to to be very frank i will not be able to cover entire grammar in these two hours not possible at all okay online i hope i'm clear clear yes online people please respond yes ma'am we are clear okay thank you okay now i think uh, regular verbs are nothing but the verbs you know whose uh, okay the verbs which you the most conjugate conjugations means what combining i've told you s adding s and all which when you add the suffix to the verb okay the verbs that follow the most usual conjugation which are very common play becomes place okay okay do you know this when you when we write i you i play you play he she and it plays so s is added they play we play okay so when only an s is if we are able to add s to the verb that is the most common conjugation then they are called as regular verbs okay that follow the most usual common conjugations they are considered to be regular verbs okay because it abides or follows abides by most if if not all the regular rules it follows most of the grammar rules those are called as regular verbs okay next coming to irregular verb what are irregular verbs they do not follow the grammar rules i mean they don't follow every time they might change based on the context and situation those type of verbs are called as irregular verbs understood example do the dishes okay here do remains do we don't change it to any other form we don't add any suffix or prefix to it right she drove all the way back actually what what should be the uh, past tense form what is the past tense of drive 
it is drove generally what is the past tense of any verb we add ed to the verb to change it to past tense right but here we don't say drived drive becomes drove so it is not following the particular form particular rule that is generally followed Read. so the, sorry read that sorry read. you are not clear read yes read. even read yes it becomes read in the past tense but without the change of the spelling only the pronunciation changes right so even that is an irregular verb okay mm -hmm. Now, moving on, transitive. What are transitive verbs? Transitive, the verb that takes a direct object sitting right after it would be a transitive verb. So it is like, okay, just look at the sentences. Don't go to the meanings, definitions, right? She went to the fair. So went becomes the transitive word. We don't like being called out in crowds. I love visiting my village village home. See here, love refers to the village home, the home in the village, right? So here, what is happening? The verb that is the main verb. It takes the object after it directly, right? To describe. So here, for example, I love visiting my village home. Here, where is love directly? You know, directing to the village. The love for the village home. Right, so love becomes a transitive. There is an action, right? Love has there is no physical action, but there is an emotion attached, right? So love becomes a what? What? What verb is it? Transitive verb. Transitive verb. Yes, understood. Now coming to intransitive is quite opposite, obviously. So the main verb. That does not take the direct object. Okay, that is called as the intransitive verb. For example, I laughed. That's it. I laughed. There is no object there. There is no requirement of the object. I laughed. So laughed becomes the intransitive verb. Okay. John ran. Where did he run to? Not required. He just ran. Okay. So ran becomes the intransitive verb. A gust of cold wind. What is gust? What is a gust of cold wind? What do you mean by that? Gust. By the sentence, what do you understand in your in your words? What do you mean by gust? Hmm? Sorry. Uh, like a snow, snow, snow. Sorry, I didn't get you. It's like a floating ghost, ghost, flying ghost. Ghost. No, not ghost. Sorry, a gust of cold wind, in the sense like uh, suppose there's cold wind, cold breeze outside. You're inside your house, right? When you open your windows, there's cold. You know, with some force it comes in, right? So that is called a gust of cold wind. Yes. Okay. So here, a gust of cold wind blew. There is no object specifically. It just blew in. Okay. Blow. The past tense is blew. Even that is an irregular verb. Got it? Understood? Okay. Now we have weak verbs also. Weak verbs that end with D or T directly. Are, for example, um, spend. Right? It is ending with D. That become, It's a weak verb. Okay? There is a tendency to associate weak verbs with regular verbs. But not all weak verbs are regular verbs. Just don't try to go into detail. Okay, mm -hmm. you'll get confused. Any verb that ends with D and T. For example, D changes to T. Spend becomes spent. Walk, walked. Book, booked. Lean, learn, learnt. Want, wanted. Right? Anything that ends with T and D becomes a weak verb. Okay? Strong verb is just the opposite. Ring, rang, rung. V1, V2, V3. Right? They are those which in which the vowels are changed. Okay? Ring, I, is changed to rang. 
again in the participle form it is changed to rung v1 v2 v3 just the vowel is changed these are called as strong verbs yes drink drank drunk swim swam swam ring rang rung yes understood we're okay, coming to finite and non finite verbs they are the finite verbs are what they are called roots of the sentences it is which is performed by or refers to okay don't go through this please you will get confused okay let's go to the example alex went to school here what is the subject alex is the subject and it is performed it has performed the action in the past right so we have an evidence of the information that it has happened already by the verb with the help of which verb with the help of which verb what is the verb in that sentence went so we have the confirmation went. that alex has gone to school with the help of the verb went right so that means action has happened and we are sure of it so these kind of verbs are called as finite verbs okay coming to non finite verbs they are not actually verbs they do not work as verbs in the sentence rather they work as nouns for example alex went abroad to play to play is in which form infinitive form i told you right to plus the verb is and is called an infinitive verb okay so alex went abroad to play even though play is a verb play is a verb but it is not acting as a verb there went is a verb in this sentence actually play is working as a noun some action i mean not action it's working as an object right so it is in the infinitive form so th these are called as non finite verbs understood which do not act as verbs as such in the sentence act rather they work as they act as nouns these are called as non finite verbs now what okay we have um, we know what are action verbs right which has specific action in them right transitive verbs we have discussed now take a note of this please subject plus an intransitive verb it is sufficient to make a complete sentence subject any subject plus an intransitive verb we know what are intransitive verbs what are intransitive verbs which do not have an object i told you the examples right i loved yeah, ran, okay. she ran. yes without an object so these are enough to make a sentence but subject plus transitive verb they are not enough you need to have an object with them direct object okay understood everyone yes yes ma'am okay thank you so subject and a transitive verb cannot make a complete sentence but you can make a sentence with the help of a subject plus the intransitive verb okay okay linking verbs are nothing but they add details about the subject okay for example the words are given linking verbs are nothing but the be forms that i have told you helping verbs am is are was were these are called as be form be verbs okay act feel remain appear become seem smell sound these are some verbs in this list these can also be some action words some of the words in the list can also be action words this because they can also act as linking verbs yes see if you see the example you might understand she appears ready for the game here she is ready for the game that's what we understand okay that means appear is not directly saying that she is ready for the game but we the meaning is understood right the food seemed delicious that that means what the food was delicious we know it and right? it's so we can also say it seemed delicious right you look happy i i look happy i can't say i look happy i can't look at myself right so i say you look happy that means you are happy it is showing on your face 
So instead of saying you are happy, I say you look happy. Yes, got it. Okay, auxiliary verbs. They are nothing but helping word verbs, which I told you is, are, have. All these are called as helping verbs or auxiliary verbs. Both are same. Okay, do, don't. Even these, there, there is no specific action here in the verb, but still they, there is, they act as verbs. These are called as helping verbs. Okay. Coming to modal verbs. Modal verb is actually a kind of auxiliary verb, a helping verb. But the difference is it helps the main verb to indicate possibility. I mean, we can say the action might or might not happen we are not sure of it okay if there is a possibility that it might happen okay suppose you are invited to a party your friend's birthday party what do you say i may come that means you're not sure if you will go or not you might go or you might not go it depends right so these are called as modal verbs i may want to talk to you again okay not sure he might talk he might not talk okay they must play their best game to win so in, in, in case they wish to win, they have to play. If they don't play, they will not win, right? So there is a possibility. Any verb that has a possibility, they are called as modal verbs that indicate possibility, okay? Should, could, can, will, would, all these are modal verbs. Understood? Reflexive verbs, again, same himself. See, when the subject and the object are same, verb reflects on the subject. Okay. These verbs are often used with reflexive pronouns. I've told you what are reflexive pronouns. Myself, himself, herself, itself, themselves. All these are reflexive pronouns, right? So any verb that is indicating to the, directing to the reflexive pronouns, they are called as reflexive verbs. Okay. And remember like that. Verb directing to pronouns. Reflexive pronouns are called as reflexive verbs. Example, he has done it himself. I'll watch it myself. Okay, here the verb is directing to the pronoun, right? Reflexive pronoun. So they are called as reflexive verbs. Understood all of you? Any doubts online? Any doubts you have? Are you able to follow me? Yes, ma'am, we are following. Thank you. Sorry. Not for will not. That is wrong. Incorrect ground. He has done it himself. Okay. Now, okay. Ergative verb and phrasal verbs. Feeling sleepy again? How many of you are sleepy? Online? Anyone feeling sleepy? No. No? Okay. Thank you for responding. <laughs> Please mute. Okay. Thank you. So, ergative. What are ergative verbs? They can be used both as transitive and intransitive verbs. They are called as labile verbs in English. I'm not sure how far are you able to understand these verbs. Ergative verbs. Okay, see, intransitive verb is the door opens. There is no object required there. The door just opens, right? Transitive verbs, I opened the door. So open here becomes the ergative. You can use it both as transitive as, as well as intransitive verb. Yes, so that becomes, that is called an ergative word. You need not remember these terms, please. Not required. Just remember the usage. That's enough. Okay. Again, coming to phrasal verbs. What are, you know what are phrases? The idioms that we have discussed. Remember the idioms? Yes. So phrases are nothing but a phrase. It consists of a verb and another, another element. Okay. Most likely, mostly an adverb or a preposition. That is called a phrasal verb. A combination of a, an adverb and a preposition. For example, she broke down into tears that means what she cried that is what it literally means right she cried 
she broke down into she broke down in tears right which is the adverb there adverb what is an adverb which describes yes yes what is the preposition in in is a preposition so it's a combination of preposition and adverb so they are called as phrasal verbs okay don't look down upon the poor i'll see to it see is a verb right to and to becomes the preposition here so combination it becomes a phrasal verb yes got it all of you okay lexical and delexical verbs actually i'm supposed to give a break after verbs but because you were feeling so sleepy okay guys smile please it's not history class okay right what are lexical i told you what are, what is lexical what do you mean by lexical words vocabulary right so lexical verb is a main verb of a sentence which takes the major responsibility of the sentence right without that verb there is no meaning he ran to his father there is meaning right if you remove the verb he to his father any meaning no meaning there there is no sense to that sentence right i laughed out loud laughed becomes a lexical verb that is there is there should be some sense to that sen the, the sentence is logical only with the help of that verb right those are called as lexical verbs what are delexical opposite they don't have that much importance in a sentence in even in the absence of that verb the sentence can stand out okay for example you say he took a shower the meaning is taken out of the verbs and put into the noun take have make these are called as delexical verbs give etc these are all delexical verbs i had a cold drink she made some arrangements even without made some arrangements make some sense arrangements okay so these are called as delexical verbs now coming to stative verbs what are stative ver verbs that describe the state of being for example you need need belong okay i need some boxes i need some chocolates i need some books you belong to the pomp and power pomp and power is don't you know just uh, concentrate on belong you belong to the pomp and power he smells danger we can't literally smell danger he smells danger means he can sense that there is some danger coming okay so these verbs state the being the state of being that describe the state of being right what are dynamic verbs dynamic verbs are they give the continuous or progressive action of the subject okay which are called as dynamic or finitive verbs example he is running fast what do they do they express the subject state of being the subject state of being here okay he is running fast what is how is he running sorry what without running can we uh, is there any meaning to the sentence he is running fast without running if you just say fast there is no meaning right he is running fast keep hitting the ball keep uh, hitting the ball hard the dog goes for a walk every afternoon so here walk becomes a dynamic verb so any verb that is that comes after the continuous action of the subject here the subject is dog dog goes for a walk right so the verb is coming after the continuous form the dog is walking right the dog walks so dog goes for a walk the walk or the verb walk has come after the subject the action continuous action of the dog is going where for a walk so walk becomes the dynamic verb getting it if not completely at least a little bit yes okay 
now coming to non continuous verbs verbs that are usually never used in continuous form that is they do not have ing form they are called as non continuous verbs for example i love to do the chords you can't say loving okay you cannot add ing at least if it is in the verb form so these are called as non continuous that means they do not have continuous itself means we add ing form right ing form for verbs which uh, for which we do not we cannot add ing they are called as non continuous verbs he does not hate you you cannot say hating you can't say he is hating you i am liking to swim no they are incorrect right so these are called as non continuous verbs yes then we have intensive and extensive verbs the verbs that focus intensely on only the subject verbs that focus only on the subject of the sentence they are called as intensive verbs for example you seem happy that means you look happy where is the subject direct where is the verb directing to you right who is looking happy you so seems becomes the intensive verb there it appears to be just perfect so appears what is appearing it appears right she looks stunning looks who is looking stunning she so the verb is directing to the subject intense okay it is focusing on the subject so those are called as intensive verbs what are extensive verbs they oh, it's quite it's total opposite they do not focus on the subject okay all the verbs that do not focus on the on only the subject of the sentence they are called as extensive verbs he loves her for example so that verb is focusing both on the subject as well as the object not only the subject yes so these type of verbs are called as extensive verbs opposite to intensive intensive is only focusing on the subject extensive both subject and the object okay okay we already took a break we already done, we have done an activity right now coming to the participle form guys any doubts you have so far online please respond no fine everything is clear you are able to understand follow me yeah clear, clear. Okay. thank you yeah yeah okay coming to the participle forms what is a participle form online you can see it on the screen i guess what is participle form yes v1 v2 v3 i think you remember by that name v1 v2 v3 verb 1 form 1 form 2 and form 3 right participle form is nothing but the v3 form okay present participle you have verb plus ing past participle you don't have any anything added the v3 form that i'm talking about take took taken i have taken a hint taken is a participle form right have you given it enough given give gave given right so given is in the v3 form that is a past participle form now perfect participle is nothing but we use having plus the v3 form past participle form having said that i was quite worried means after saying that i was i got worried okay having stepped out of my comfort zone that is after stepping out of my comfort zone i saw a new world i understood what the world is exactly right got the point how to use yes okay gerund the verbs some verbs can have ing forms also in the end okay 
now but these function or these act like nouns they don't act like verbs the such verbs are called as gerunds understood they are actually verbs with ing but they do not act as verbs they act as nouns in the sentence those such verbs are called as gerunds example smoking is injurious to health here the verb is injurious smoking even though it is a verb smoke is a verb we are adding ing and making it using it as a noun in the sentence so smoking becomes a gerund here able to understand similarly walking even though walk is a verb here we are using it as a noun yes i love swimming swim is a verb but we are adding ing to it and we are using it as a noun okay it's okay even if you don't understand gerunds i mean the typical meaning what the gerund is just understand the usage we can use in this way also okay what are infinitives i have told you the two plus verb form are called infinitives that's it no need to remember in detail okay adjectives now what are adjectives sorry which describes a noun right it describes a noun or a pronoun in a sentence for example the team has a dangerous batsman i have told you this right ask the question what which if you can if a if a word is answering such questions then that becomes the adjective he the team has a dangerous batsman what kind of batsman dangerous batsman so dangerous becomes the adjective i have 10 candies in my pocket how many 10 so 10 becomes the adjective right understood okay now types we have many types descriptive quantitative proper demonstrative possessive interrogative indefinite articles and compound adjectives we'll just see in short what are these because we are we're we'll running out of time it's already 126 right what are descriptive adjectives it's a word this which describes nouns and pronouns okay mostly all of the adject adjectives most of them belong to this group that is we are it is giving the description of something right of the noun belong to this type so descriptive adjectives are also called, called as qualitative it is giving the quality of the noun so they are also called qualitative adjectives okay example i have a fast car what car do i have i have a fast car so fast becomes it is giving the quality of the car the noun right so it is also called qualitative adjective fast becomes the descriptive adjective i am hungry so it is giving some information about my about myself about me right i so it becomes the adjective here i saw a flying eagle what is a what kind of eagle did i see a flying eagle so flying is describing it is giving the description quality so it becomes the descriptive adjective okay next quantitative we have talked about qualitative now this quantitative quantity right it provides the information on the quantity of the nouns number right i have 20 bucks or 20 rupees in my wallet how many 20 so 20 becomes the adjective there right i have three children how many children three children three becomes the adjective simple right when you look at the term it might look difficult to understand but when you understand it it will be easy for you right you should have completed the whole task how much of task whole that means completely so whole becomes the adjective there understood proper adjectives they are adjective form of proper nouns we know what are proper nouns so adjectives of proper nouns are proper adjectives okay example american cars are very strong what cars are strong american cars so american becomes the proper adjective similarly i love kfc burgers what burgers do i love kfc so kfc becomes the proper adjective understood 
demonstrated then at one point they directly refer to something this that those right that building is so gorgeously decorated you know we know what is gorgeous beautiful right so that becomes the demonstrative adjective here similarly these cats are cute what cats these cats are cute so these is the demonstrative adjective even if you don't remember what type of adjective is there it is it is fine if we can just know if it is an adjective or not what is the adjective there that's enough okay next possessive same it indicates the possession or ownership example my car is parked outside whose car my car so my is the adjective her books are interesting whose books are interesting her books so her becomes the adjective there interrogative question mark again which phone do you see which is the adjective right what game do you want to play what game so what is the again which what whose these words are called as interrogative adjectives okay now coming to indefinite as the name tells you indefinite is describes or modifies a noun unspecifically for example say few many much most all all these are indefinite adjectives i gave some water to her so how much water did you give her some water so some becomes the indefinite adjective it is an adjective right several writers that is which you cannot count with at least in that context water sugar right i want a few minutes alone how many is not specified just a few minutes if i specify 5 minutes 5 becomes the adjective quantitative adjective right but here i am not specifying i am just saying few minutes so it is indefinite adjective understood articles i guess you know what are articles a and the a is used for sorry and is used for vowels a e i o u words which start with vowels a is used for consonants other than five vowels all the other 21 letters alphabets are called as consonants we use a for them where is the used the is used to when we are referring to a specific noun the the cat the building i'm talking about only that particular building so i say the building i'm talking about when i am specifically talking about a particular noun that is called as those are we use the in those cases okay okay i guess compound adjectives is nothing but compound is more what combination right more than one more than one so compound is a nouns or combined words which modify other nouns for example i have a broken down sofa so broken down two adjectives together they become the compound adjective i saw a 6 foot long snake three together three adjectives 6 foot long so that becomes a compound adjective okay coming to degree of adjectives you you know this comparative superlatives you know comparison of words adjectives good better best bad worse worst these are comparatives right so these are called as degree of adjectives i guess you all of you know it i don't need to go in detail about degrees of adjectives right beautiful what do you, what do we use for beautiful that is superlative what is comparative beautiful more beautiful most beautiful fast faster fastest understood those are degrees of adjectives now i guess already 130 so okay as i told you i will not be able to cover the whole grammar in two or two and a half hour session right but so far do you have any doubts online were you able to follow what i've said or what i've explained please respond it's clear ma'am yes no doubt no doubt is it clear I... then you're not having doubts or it's not clear so you know you didn't understand anything so you don't have any doubts it can it's be both ways so... 
Okay. <coughs> Sorry. No, grammar doesn't mean only parts of speech. You have many other things also. So so far we have learned only we have not even covered the whole parts of speech. We are just in adjectives part, right? We have adverbs, we have interjections, we have conjunctions, all that. And apart from parts of speech, we have other things also in grammar, other parts, right? So, um, okay, as I said, no doubts here for you in the class. Any doubts you have? No? Clear as of now? At least till what I've explained? Yes? Uh, so, actually, we have just started yeah. this program. Okay, we have started a communication and soft skills program in Harsha Trainings. Um, I think a month month and a half one and a half month back okay yes okay any questions just think any questions you have i'm i've stopped my sharing my screen online i've heard only uh, from one or two people what about others No questions. Um, yeah. I think this is a great session because a lot of things uh, in terms of the subject were not thought even at the school level. I even forget a lot of them. I really okay. liked it. Thanks for the session. Thank you so much. Any other feedback you have? Others, please? Yes? Okay, I guess all of you have uh, forwarded your number uh, to the number that I've given that is there in the notepad. Okay, how many of you have forwarded your numbers? Just one second, I'll uh, I'll call out the number once again. Please WhatsApp your name and the confirmation that you have attended this workshop to the below to the following number. 9885 both online and offline please 9885 31 Now please all of you have done Please respond. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. Thank you so much for attending the workshop. Hope to see you all here sometime. Okay, at Harsha Trainings. Thank you so much. We hope so. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>